Go, Martin. All right, thank you very much for having me as a sequel to uh, uh, Alex Matsinkowski's uh, talk. Um, I won't use much of it, I'll just use the definition because I'm going to do it differently. So, uh, but to be able to uh, tell you about the way uh, uh, the definitions work, this is, by the way, technically definable, I mean, in the sense of logic, right? Mm -hmm. I have to tell you about the formulas and therefore also about the language. So we are, we start with the, everything is over a fixed ring, mm -hmm. an associative ring with one. So, and modules are unital, R modules, okay, and, and usually left, but I will also have right modules. Mm -hmm. That's all left, all unitary left R modules. And then I will need that at some point, that's the same with the right. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the setting, and the language we use has um, the signature more precisely has zero and plus for the abelian group, and then here comes the thing that is important, but the choice is here. So we have unary functions uh, for every, well, strictly speaking, it's this, right? For every ring element, I have a unary function. So these are unary functions. We will still write for, you know, for this, I will write Rx, right? But it's important to understand that the, you know, I can't quantify all of the Rs. Those are part of my language. Um, if people wonder why that's done this way, well, you could do it too sortedly where you can quantify also over the ring, but then you get, you see the, when you do this kind of thing, module theory, you work in a fixed category. You don't switch the rings. I mean, that's a separate process to switch from one category to another. So you can't expect to be able to quantify over, this would be quantifying over all categories, makes no sense. Right? I mean, from that standpoint. Of course, it's an interesting approach too, but not for this kind of thing. And all the classical algebra, uses the fact that these categories are good, additive, you know, nice categories, which completely disappears if you let the ring vary. Okay, so that's just the, what we're talking in, that's our language. And then uh, the main formulas are positive, primitive formulas. So, I mean, I usually, when it's for algebraists, general algebraists, I usually don't start from the formulas, but from some algebra. But I assume since we're in the category seminar, everyone knows some logic, right? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Right, right? Sure. Right. Yeah. You might think of it in funny ways, but... Yeah, okay, yeah. that's fine. Okay. You're probably in some sort of abstract whatever, but... Okay. Well. So, positive is clear what it means, right? No mm -hmm. negation allowed. Primitive is also a technical classical term. It means, usually primitive just means uh, you are just um, an existentially quantified conjunction of atomic and negated atomic. Okay, I'm gonna write it like this, okay? Formulas, that's what primitive means. Now, positive primitive, of course, means this is not there. So we just have this. If you look at it in this language, of course, every atomic formula is a term equation. So module of the axioms of modules where you can subtract and whatever, and, and com you know, distributivity, you can combine like terms and stuff. You can think of this as being an equation like this, right? Plus Rn, Xn equals zero, and I put a dot when I mean the logic, okay? So my connectives are, this is one of the non-logical, I mean of the logical symbols, right? So those are the atomic ones, and then I have finite conjunctions. It's all finite, first order, okay? All finite, so that means I have actually 
finitely many such equations and I let them run, let's say, well, usually I make this, well, it doesn't matter. So M, M of them, right? That's that. And then I quantify some of these guys out. So if I, let's say I quantify out like uh, xn minus 1 and xn. Mm -hmm. So then it shows that in every module, the solution set of this is the projection onto the first n minus 2 mm -hmm. right, coordinates of my of, of solution, of solution set of finite system of linear equations. So I can call this linear algebra mm -hmm. with E. Yeah. Written backwards, right? Mm -hmm. or with projections. That's what model theory of modules is because there's a general result, which we don't need, but it's good to know, that every formula in, in this language mm -hmm. is modulo the entire category equivalent to a Boolean combination of such PP mm -hmm. formulas. So disjunctions of conjunctions right. of PP and negated PP formulas. And that explains why in the whole model theory of modules only these really play a role, and on the other hand, that these are the ones explains why the model theory of modules is so algebraic and close to the algebra, and that's why, you know, also why this is possible mm -hmm. to apply it to such things. So those are the PP formula. We call them just PP formula, okay? I'm going to say PPF. Mm -hmm. And we have them on the left and on the right. I mean, as for category theorists, I don't even have to say this. It's the same as over the opposite ring, and I didn't, right. sure. wouldn't even have to have two languages, right? One, but I will still write them on the left if I think of left modules on, on the right if I think of right modules, even though I can think of them as interpretation of the same language. Mm -hmm. So um, there, there's some type of embedding theorem that says that for every type of nice category. You know, additive, whatever, whatever. There's a category. There's an. Uh, there's a ring R and R category right. R modules. Yeah. So this is kind of saying that such nice formulas describe everything in an additive category. Right. Pretty yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of this. I'm a very you know conservative model of model theory of modules guy, but all this has been extended by model theorists to to uh, you know probably categories and other things. So there's a big book by Mike Prest uh, about this, which is, which is called, and that has everything I'm going to tell you about these formulas. So it's called, I think, purity, spectra, or maybe vice versa, and lo localization. Something like this. Some permutation of these three. And it's, it's a big tome in the, in the encyclopedia, Cambridge Encyclopedia, so it has really a lot of, and it has the whole categorical kind of uh, treatment too, which is possible, whenever it's possible. And as you know from uh, representation theory of, of, let's say, art and algebras or something like this, they work very categorically, and, 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 and Alex is one of those guys. Mm -hmm. right? so, you can, uh, of course, these, let's call them phi. And um, I'm, I'm usually, so let me uh, first say, I'm usually working with one place formulas, and I'm going to put the R on the left if I'm talking about left modules, even though we know it's, it doesn't matter. And I will call this whole thing, actually, module equivalents in modules. These form a lattice, a modular lattice, because that's modules. It's a sub, it's going to be, it's a sub, in, if you evaluate it in a module, it's going to be a sub a lattice of the, a lattice of subgroups, of additive subgroups, where uh, the, the join is, is of course intersection, but the meet is sum, right? And you can easily show that if you take two such PP formulas, their sum can be again written like this. You know, think of one, 
system of linear equations and another finite system of linear equations and you take all the sums of solutions of one and the other, you can make that the set of solutions of another linear, I mean, with projections. Okay? All right, so, um, important thing. So, this can be done for any n place. I mean, here we had n minus two place, right? DP formulas. But for, for this kind of thing, I need only one. I mean, where the remaining, after you know, quantifying out the, the free variables are just one free variable. Uh, now, these guys, if you look at them as functors or as maps, of course, uh, these are homogeneous systems, so they, the, the solution sets are subgroups uh, sub of the additive group, right? If you add two, it's again a solution of the same system. So it since, uh, so I'm going to write phi of m, I'm going to write, so m a module goes to phi of m. So that's the solution set, okay? So it's a, and it's a functor because if you have two modules and you have a solution in the first one and you apply a homomorphism, of course the image is a solution of the same system in the other one, right? Yeah. So it's a functor. In general, it, it does not go to, it's not an endofunctor or, you know, it doesn't go to modules because if the ring is not commutative, these guys are not submodules in general. Mm -hmm. Though, in the ring itself, if you look at the ring on the left, as a module over itself, then this is always a right ideal. Yeah. Right? Because you can multiply it to, on the right mm -hmm. with ring elements, but not with module elements. Mm -hmm. While this is true, uh, phi of m is usually not a module. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. So this is the this is the very basic uh, um, you know terminology that we need, yeah. and now we need some technical thing. By the way, I should say this is joint work with Alex. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask a yes. Sorry. Like I'm seeing like just naively yes. like this looks like sort of varieties and stuff just done yes. in different right. settings. So should should I be able to go back the other way too? Like uh, given something in add, like I should be able to like you know get back the modules that share that solution. Like there should be like a. You mean from the, here to there? Yeah, there should be like an adjoint or equivalence or something like in between uh, categories if you do it right. Um, if, it, if you don't have that worked out, that's fine. That, yeah, it seems like, know. but in other settings you see that. So right, I right. think there should be one like that here. Yeah. Okay. Right. I guess just say yeah, just saying that if I have the solution set, mm -hmm. you know, since they presumably your equivalence was meant to be all equations of the same solution set. Right. So I should get back, you know, given the solution set, I should be able to get back that whole But I mean even if you have a field, so it's really linear algebra mm -hmm. over so how does that what is then I mean if you have a solution set which is just yeah. a I mean and let's take a division ring so that sure, the solution sure, sure. sets are not Vector space, mm -hmm. but you know, just yeah. a subgroup. How do you get back the vector space? Right. What's the natural transformation? So same. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, if you take the whole lattice. Right. Sure. I mean, but even then, you have many. You know, you have many completely different modules with the same yeah. lattice. Sure. Yeah, I would have to. Obviously, in this case, we're saying you know the thing as a sub space mm -hmm. of the ambient space. But through the ambient space. I couldn't do it. I'm, oh, oh, okay. I'm saying I have an ambient space, I have a subspace, but then I get, you know, all the possible that's equations. That's fine. I, it's a digression. I was but, just... Yeah, yeah, but let me just... It, it may be instructive, right? So take take a vector space over Q, which mm -hmm. is just, you know, some direct sum of copies mm -hmm. of alpha, mm -hmm. of alpha copies, alpha and ordinal, right, of Q. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. PP lattice of this is mm -hmm. just the PP, so lambda of this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm of one given module like this mm -hmm. is, is just um, it's just one and zero. I mean everything in and zero. You can't do anything else. Mm -hmm. And um, and the same 
if you vary alpha, it's always the same. So you, it's the same as just the letters of Q itself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't, I think a lot vanishes of sure. the actual structure of the underlying module. Okay. That's for one, right? One place. Mm -hmm. Many places, sure. of course, you get curves like in right. right geometry, right? If you have several yeah. places. So then I guess, yeah. So in what sense did restricted on one place was enough here? Well, okay. that, that's only for this look? theory. Oh, that's this theory only looks at the one. I yeah, see. We, you will see why. Okay. But, but in general, you can, all do, you can mm -hmm. do all of this with, with n variables. Right, right. And, but what you have is like this thing. And mm -hmm. this is why this is true. If you have a direct sum of two modules, mm -hmm. that's the direct sum of the PP subgroups. We call these PP subgroups, mm -hmm. right? Things like that. And it also distributes even over infinite direct sum and also over infinite product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, what one of the early guys in algebraist called a p-functor for product close functor. Okay, mm -hmm. or commuting with products, but you know, the same for a direct sum. It's easy to check, mm -hmm. right? Just look at the solution, mm -hmm. it's really sure. just completely elementary. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure, mm -hmm. right? Your so, algebraic jump, algebraic geometry di dictionary, mm -hmm. right? So, but it's here, it's completely you well, know, the additive which algebraic geometry yeah. isn't, isn't right. Right. Well, because there's a lin like I said, this is really linear algebra. Not right, it's not linear, linear not non linear algebra. Yeah, it's just linear algebra sure. where we replace the, key, the field by a ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, and we have that extra thing here projections. Yeah. Which, of course, algebraic geometry also has. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the, that's the setting. Now, there's, there's some more, there's a machinery that was developed also by Prest in like, in the 80s, so more than three decades ago. And that gives us a, an interesting, so, 80s, it's, he called it elementary duality. And that is a map, D, we call it D, it takes yeah, I, I, I decided lambda is just with one, right? So mm -hmm. the, the left ones to the right ones, but it's an anti-isomorphism. I don't know what, maybe like this, <laughs> instead of, so it's anti-isomorphism, okay? Which means, which means, so let's, let's look at it a little bit more in detail. So the, the biggest element here is x equals x, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is a solution of that. And the smallest one is x equals zero. And strictly speaking, as I said, we have to look up to equivalence in all modules. But I will always gloss over that because it makes you know horrible notation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you know in between you can have things like R x equals zero, right? That's mm -hmm. that's a specific sure. quantifier free case, or one with quantifier S. Mm -hmm. well, let me actually do it differently. S x equals zero and R divides mm -hmm. x. This would be the one that says there's a y such that r y equals x, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just a shorthand for that. So all these guys are somewhere in between, and it's a modular lattice because it's a sublattice of the, for every given module, it's a sublattice of the uh, uh, subgroup lattice. So here we have the same on the left and on the right. These guys don't. Uh, differ, but of course for this one we would get, well, I'm going to write something else, sorry. I'm going to write x r equals zero, and here I'm going to write s divides, but on the other side I'm going to write x up. So this is, there is a y such that y s equals x, okay? Division, division on the other, divisibility on the other side. Mm -hmm. And this d, well, since it's an anti-isomorphism, let me actually use this. So D, sends this guy here and this guy there, so it does everything upside down. And it sends, this is more interesting maybe, sends the divisibility to an annihilation and the annihilation to the corresponding divisibility. Ah, okay. 
So it's very, and, and this is on the level of, you see, such a formula I can write, and then you see basically what the, what the duality does on general formulas. I can write this guy here as, well, let me do it just so, I remember this comes later. So uh, I can write the coefficients as a matrix, A, and, well, actually, no, I should separate the variables. Let me write down first what you can do, and then you can figure it out what I mean. So I can write this as A divides B X bar, where X bar is the free variables. So here it would be the first N minus 2. And the curse B would be the corresponding matrix of these, matrix of these. And A would be the, I would write it here, and it would be the other matrix of the quantified ones. Right? So every PP formula can be written like this for matching matrices over R. So then, you can actually say, if you have now, you know, A divide, the whole matrix divides something, that goes to matrix annihilation. But you have to still make it, it's, it's more complicated than that, on the, for very general PP formulas. But for, for us now, this is enough to know. Usually a duality is an equivalence of two categories, where one of the categories has an up. So can you just consider that on the right to be R lambda up? Yes, right. No, I, I mean, you can consider this as R up, lambda, right? Okay, good. Yeah, and then... So then that's more... Yeah. And so it's, a, it's really an equivalence of categories. Right. Um, well... Well, lattice is used as categories? Yeah, well, uh, I'm not quite sure, but something like that. Um, another thing that also is clear from this that uh, and will go to plus and plus will go to and, right? So phi plus, mm -hmm. phi plus psi goes to d phi and d psi, right? So Categorically, this just sounds like it's saying I swapped the limit and the co-limit. Yeah, something like that, right? Maybe. Well, you can do all this on finitely presented modules in, as, as, you know, as uh, representable functors, mm -hmm. finitely presented functors, actually, that are represented by finitely presented modules. And then maybe from there you can extract a little more categorical point of view. My, my uh, um, categorical perspective is kind of very limited, okay? I'm sorry to say. Okay, so um, that's duality, which is actually very important here, you will see. And um, one interesting thing about that duality, of course, it goes, I, I'm going to write also d if I go backwards, okay? So that d squared is 1. It is one. So if you take it twice, right? Okay. Um, now the interesting, really interesting application of this. Well, Press did it actually to. He introduced this to tackle the, the famous pure semi-simplicity conjecture. I don't know if people have heard about that, which says basically, if uh, if um, well, should we say it? Yeah, if every module on one side is a direct sum of, well, wait a minute. I can say it more easily with using other technical terms. So if every module on one side is pure, pure injective, which means injectivity with respect to pure embeddings. I can describe pure embeddings with, with PP formulas. I can say it in a, in a second. Um, the question is, is then, is the ring already a finite representation type? So, which is equivalent to saying, if every left module is pure injective, is then also every right module pure injective? This is a deep thing, it's been open, it, it's still open. It's been open for, set, I mean, probably half a century at hmm. least. But here's an interesting implication, which, application which is very uh, easy. And this is 
Herzog's criterion for criterion for being zero in a tensor product. So if I have two modules, um, you know, one right R module, one left R module, and take the tensor product as, as an abelian group, then uh, something, let me write a general element here as B tensor A bar, where these are matching tuples, and then by this I mean the linear combination of the elementary tensors, okay? BI tensor AI, okay? Um, so this is zero. So B tensor A is zero in this tensor product if and only if there is a PP formula phi of that array. Look, we have, let's say this is n tuples, okay? This has to be an n tuple, this has to be an n tuple. Then this should be in PPN for, let's say, left modules, because I'm going to write that A bar is in that guy, considered an M, and B bar is in the dual of phi and N. You see, the dual of phi is the formula on the right. So this really makes the usual thing that you find in books very elegant. I can never remember how that criterion is, which every algebra book has, or at least every mod, you know, mod of every book has this describes the general tensors that are zero, right? And it's it's well, it's not that it's incomprehensible. I can't rem I can't memorize it. But this is this is basically just doing that. But the, the duality works like that. So that's, there you see why this duality is really very handy. And so you know one instance of this, right? If you, for instance, you know that if, let's just take one element each, and then this is zero, if, uh, Let's say R divides A and BR is zero, right? Mm -hmm. So you know that instant. <laughs> That's a generalization of that. So duality works exactly like that. Right. So if you take the definition of the, the concrete definition of duality, which I didn't give you, then the easy direction is really easy to see if you have this, the, this side, then this must be zero. But the hard direction is the other way around. So find that formula. Another application of this is one. Another application is if E is injective, let's say an injective left R module, then any PP subgroup, so take a PP subgroup, and this works even for many places, but let's just take one place, is um, you, take, you have to evaluate D phi in the ring, on the, the DFI, this is on the left, okay? So this will be on the right. And you take the, so this is a certain ideal, left ideal, you take the annihilator of, of that ideal in E. So in injectives, they look very nice. And the third thing, this is not really an application of duality because it doesn't use duality, but, and this here is, this is some stuff that I did with Press and Ziegler, like, also three de two decades ago, more than two decades ago, 90s. So this is pressed me and Siegel. And the third is a, is a purely algebraic, this is 70s. Um, and OK, I should say, if and only if, if you have this for all such phi, then the module is injected. Or at least absolutely pure. Yeah, let's say absolutely pure, but that's a little weaker. Sure. Um, so, t but it's, well, anyway. So, Zimmerman proof for, th so this is kind of a description of absolute purity in terms of PP subgroups, and there's a same, there's a similar uh, description of flatness. Uh, if and only if 
phi of m, so you take such if, so this is for all phi, and one place is enough, but it's true for a many place. You take the ideal, so you evaluate it in the ring, and take that's the right ideal, and then multiply with m. That, for instance, shows you why flat modules are torsion-free. Are torsion-free, you have to change the definition accordingly. And that's the real correct definition for torsion-freeness over non-domains. Mm -hmm. Look at Rx equals zero. So uh, an element here gets annihilated by R. If it can be written as a linear combination, where of elements of M, where the coefficients already are annihilated. Mm -hmm. And that's the correct definition of torsion freeness, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. This is Hattori's, actually, definition, in the sense of Hattori, or Hattori, I think he's Japanese, in the 60s. But that comes out here from the PP stuff right away. Mm -hmm. um, now, I think that's all I need from the general theory, mm -hmm. and so maybe yeah, I, I was actually going to write some of this here, so maybe um, I will actually put this here, so in flat, you can only for all phi, let's say in pp1, mm -hmm. we have phi of m is phi of r times m, and M absolutely pure, and only for all phi, we have phi of M is the annihilator in M of d phi of the ring on the other side. Okay? So that's what we need. And we, and we need this here. But I will remind you of, of it when we get there. Actually, yeah, I still have one blackboard there, right? So um, now to describe, now we're getting into the torsion theory, and what we need is a kind of curious dichotomy on these formulas on lambda one. We have a dichotomy, so either p is high. So this is a new ter term that I uh, introduced for this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. If um, so, that means, i.e., phi of e equals e for every injective. Okay, or else, and this can't be both at once, there is uh, a non-zero ring element that annihilates the, the whole thing as a functor. Okay? Which means in every module, little r annihilates that, that subgroup. So as a functor, right? I mean, you can think of r, r phi is also a functor, right? But that sends every m to R phi of n, right? So it's also a function. And of course, this is, you can even look at this as a PP formula that says, you know, there's a y in phi, such that x equals r y, right? So that's dichotomy number one that I proved a long time ago by completely a uh, non-advanced methods before I knew duality. So in the 80s, long time ago. Um, and now, if you take uh, the dual of high is actually low, and what does low mean? So, mean, so and the one is called low if it vanishes on all flats. Well, I 
denote the flats by obviously by flat left R. So on this, but by by the, by Zimmerman's criterion, you see it's enough to uh, R itself is flat to uh, vanish on R, right? So this is i.e. phi of R R is zero. That's called low. And it turns out, in fact, that duality brings high formulas to low formulas and low formulas to high formulas on the other side. But you know, everything that can be do done on one side can be done on the other. So I get a second, from that I get a second dichotomy that shows actually every formula is either low or co-bounded. Co See, you could call this co-vanish, right? This co-vanishes. It's like uh, E over P of E vanishes, right? Um, I call that co-vanish. This is zero. And then I also have co-bounded, where there's a ring element that makes that zero. So there's another a second dichotomy like that. And the, the interaction between these kind of dichotomies is very interesting. You can, but this is a different topic that I, that came out of actually working on this. You can describe domains in terms of that, that behavior of low and high formulas, and you can, you see the two, what the two dichotomies do is, one, so this is a lattice, okay, L, I mean lambda. So you have high formulas and bounded, for, I call those bounded, okay, these are bounded. And then there are, the other dichotomy gives me low formulas, and co-bounded formulas. If you put these two together, you get this picture, right, with four regions, west, east, north, south. And you can say, well, if you look at what these mean, this is the case if there's no formula that's both low and, and, and high. Um, but if you have no formula that's both bounded and co-bounded, that's equivalent to R being a domain. Um, and we'll get some, so this, this case is interesting in itself, but let's get back to torsion. So, now if you look at the definition of low, it's a, it's a vanishing it's a vanishing ideal, an ideal in the lattice, okay? Because if you, you know, if it vanishes on the flat, you take something smaller, of course it also vanishes. Mm -hmm. If you take the sum of two, it also vanishes, right? So, um, let's call this the, the set of all low formulas. And this is now one place, okay? Th these definitions are for one place. They are an ideal in the lattice of <laughs> one place PP formulas, right? Uh, because it's close on the sum and on the smaller and they're going down. Okay, if you take that ideal, so let me now introduce a, another functor that's based on that. So let me call S sub flat uh, the functor. Well, we have to. It's clear that it's a functor, at least to Beeling groups given by M goes to the union of all the psi of M, where psi is in my ideal of low formulas. Um, well, that it goes to add is clear because these are abelian groups. And oh, okay. And since they're an ideal, this is actually the same as the sum because each sum of two is already an element of the of psi again, right? Psi psi is closed under plus. So this is the same as this here, and therefore this is a subgroup, right? And it's functorial because all the fees are, so you can basically say 
this is the union as functors. It's the union of the functors phi as functors, right? Psi. Psi as functors. Or the sum of those, if that makes more sense algebraically. Okay? So now, that is an interesting, an interesting functor. First of all, it actually is a, I mean, these, these, these guys are subfunctors of the forgetful functor, so this is also a subfunctor of the forgetful functor, right? But better than that, it's actually a functor, so it's a subfunctor of the identity functor. It goes to, it's actually a module. Mm -hmm. And this is because of, I, I mentioned it somewhere here. You know, basically if you have, if phi is low, then r phi is also low. Because if phi vanishes on all flats, then r times it also vanishes on all flats. So this is because psi is actually closed under multiplication, under scalars. I mean, trivial, right? Obviously. If phi is low, or psi, let me stick with phi, psi is low, then r psi is low. Okay? So that makes uh, S sub flat a pre radical. That's what's called a pre radical subfunctor of the identity functor. So um, S sub flat is a pre radical. That's just a definition if, if you don't. If you want to. Okay. Now, all this can be done. For any ideal, so let's see, I mean, yeah, so all this can be done for, so a note can be done for any vanishing ideal psi. And, uh, of a class of a class C of modules. In fact, you can do all this like in Galois connection kind of way so that you get nice correspondences between the radicals and the, and the vanishing classes. So vanishing ideals and vanishing classes. Um, and then we, you know, I call the radical or the pre-radical I then call so then, then this is again, again a pre-radical, and I'm saying this so that the first theorem is more interesting for any such psi, by such meaning that it's a vanishing ideal of formulas for a class C, right? So it's the formulas, all the formulas that vanish on C. Um, <coughs> this is a radical. That means that if you take a module and mod out by the radical, mm -hmm. then it's torsion three. Okay? So this is uh, uh, not trivial. I actually had some, before I worked with uh, Alex, I had some cases of PP definable radicals, but I never dared to actually show this because it was looked so ridiculous for non-commutative rings or when, when, when you don't have purity involved. But since I knew, since I learned from Alex that it, this is true for his, his pre-radical is a radical always, I just sat down and, and, and proved it just by hand. You have to go into the PP formula and do linear algebra with E, hands on. And then you can actually prove it. So um, that's one thing. Now let's look at the classical radical. And let's just do it, um, not even assuming a domain, let's just uh, Let's call classical 
I'm going to say T because this may not always be a torsion, but so so this is a functor from R mod to AB, which is you know just the elements in M that get annihilated by some non-zero ring element. Okay, so if the ring is not a domain, this may be a silly thing, mm -hmm. but you can still you you know state what I want to state. So um, so one thing is so a lemma or just a note re note. Yeah, let's just make it a note, make it a remark. If R is a domain. T is a subfunctor of S sub flat, just because every such formula is low. If you take annihilation in the ring, it's, it's zero, right? There's no zero divisors, so as every Rx equals zero as a formula is low over a domain. But by the way, I don't mean commutative domain. I mean domain in the sense of no zero divisors, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is Becoming the standard terminology. It used to be always commutative and called mm -hmm. integral domain. So I say integral domain when I mean commutative domain. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. So now let's prove. <clears throat> um, I don't know if I want what status I want this to have. Right. So let's make this dilemma. If, um, yeah, suppose no high formula is low, there, or there are no formulas that are both high and low. Mm -hmm. That is the same thing. Mm -hmm. there is, suppose no high formula is low, which of course means that no low formula is high. Yeah. So then, this uh, PP radical, uh, S sub flat is a subfunctor of T. So, how are we going to do this? We, we have to show that every um, everything that satisfies a low formula somewhere is actually annihilated. But that was the dichotomy you want. Sorry, conveniently I just erased it. I'm sorry. So, this is proved by dichotomy one. Okay, maybe I have to say a little bit more. So if phi is low, then let me see which way I want to go. Do I want to use duality or... Well, oh, by, by assumption, then it's not high. Then it's not high. Mm -hmm. So by dichotomy one, it's bounded. Bounded meant exactly that that there is a non-zero R in R such that R phi is zero, right? So therefore, therefore, the whole phi of M, so that particular phi is below T. So every low formula as a functor is a subfunctor of the classical torsion. And therefore, their sum is 2, right? Therefore, S sub flat is also a sub function of T. Now, let's put it together. So, let's put this 2 together. If you have a... If you have a domain, which means... which implies that T is a sub function of that, radical, then, and then of course over, well actually no, over, not over every domain, T is a radical, even. but anyway, so if T is a, so let's make this some sort of uh, proposition, if R is a domain with no no high end low formulas, which means exactly this situation, right? So, no high 
and low. That means this, this is missing. Let's put it here. There's no high and low, mm -hmm. by which I mean, you know, conjunction. That means I have no corner, I mean, no east square here, but domain means I have no west square either, so it's this kind of picture, right, where I have the highs here and the lows here, and those are the same as the bounded, and these are the same as the co-bounded. Then, um, this is the same as t. So then my functor, my radical, my, my flat vanishing radical is classical torsion. And um, let's see if I, no, actually I think I don't want to do this, uh, and I don't want to prove this. So, but now the interesting thing is, so now, um, another proposition shows a domain is of this form, meaning no high and low formula, if and only if it's two-sided O-ring. And that meant, do people know the ORI? Okay. I mean, the ORI uh, tried to uh, get fraction fields for non-commutative rings. Mm -hmm. And for that, if you, if you just make, mm -hmm. if you just sit down naively and do the construction of Q from Z, where Z is a non-commutative ring, mm -hmm. then you see you need the, let's say over the right, then you need this. For every R and S, for all R S not zero, and if that that will be right or mm -hmm. So this is right or So you need it on both sides. Then that's equivalent to this situation. But of course, if you commute it, if you always there's always or because you can always swap, right? So there's never zero. So uh, commutative rings are two-sided or So over commutative. So cor corollary of commutative domains this torsion of vanishing on flats is classical torsion. Mm -hmm. Now if you remember anything from Alex's talk, that was one of his theorems about his torsion. That it's the same and it was actually one of the axioms he set out to, you know, we want to find a torsion that is classical torsion on commutative domains. So it doesn't do something, you know, completely weird on commutative domains. So therefore, you know, now we're led to um, thinking, well, maybe this is his torsion. And that's exactly what it is. And mm. So that's the theorem, theorem two. And let me define S, where S is Martzenkowski-Russell torsion. The, the, I should say, talk about radical, right? What is a radical? Which means it's the kernel of, um, you take tensor products of an injective envelope, so here, Epsilon is an injective envelope of the ring on the right. Injective envelope. And then, you know, you have the, the map from Rm to R tensor. And, I mean, to uh, Em, right? And this map is Epsilon. One sub m. Well, I should just say so. There's a one there, right? It's the functor. So th this is how he defined uh, the torsion as an injective stabilization, whatever his terms were, and it was all categorical. Uh, uh, his re his uh, motivation. But um, let's show now that this is uh, really what I 
described as S sub flat. So that's the, let's see how much we, well, let's just uh, actually the, prove the key lemma and then we're almost done. So the key lemma is this. So I'm now taking his radical, the kernel, is that's all the R bar, M bar, that may sound familiar from what I did before. This, by this is a shorthand of R, I, M, I. But you may think of it, these are ring elements and these are module elements. Mm -hmm. So you may think of it as that, you know, sum of elementary tensors. And then such that M, there is a K, natural number. There is a phi. Now this, here I need K place because of Herzog's criterion. Such that M bar is a K tuple that satisfies phi and M. And R bar is a K tuple that satisfies D phi and R. A, a k tuple of ring elements, mm -hmm. but it's actually better than that because um, we can. Well, maybe I'll, I'll do that. No, actually, in the, to the proof, it's better to have it right. Like um, right, I'm gonna say. So we will have the same thing with k, c, and m, the same, and r bar now in the annihilator of e, in e, of uh, d phi. This is on the right, r, r. And this comes from Herzog's criterion about being zero, because, so, Um, let's see, what do we need here, this is done, right, so, um, we know that, so there's the proof, right, mm -hmm. we know that this is the kernel, the kernel of epsilon tensor mm -hmm. 1m, and you have the map here, which brings any linear combination like this mm -hmm. to the to what I just write like this, right? Remember this is the linear combination and this is the sum of tensors, right? Mm -hmm. So um, so I want that th these linear combinations that go to zero in the tensor product, mm -hmm. but that means by by uh, by Herzog, mm. um, again, that some you know k phi m for some we have that m bar is in phi, well, m and r bar is in d phi d phi of e. Right? This is the mm -hmm. target, so it's in e. But by what I had here about what the PP subgroups look in injectives, I mean, this is even for absolutely pure, but in particular for injectives, they are, so this is by P or Z, they are equal to the annihilator in E of D P of R R, right? So that's that's basically that's the key lemma, is just re, you know, using using uh, Herzog's criterion. And so the final thing is to see that this is really the, the radical of all vanishing, vanishing things. So let's put this here, and then we're done. So now, proof of the theorem. One direction should be easy, 
because uh, if I have this, then well, let me see which which direction. Um, yeah, that uh, so that S is a sub functor of or a sub radical of the flat radical. Again, um, well, here it is. If R m bar is in, in, in this guy, right, for given m, evaluation of m, then we know it looks like this. Then R, uh, then uh, m bar is in P of m for some formula phi such that R is in the annihilator let me see uh, what do I want to do wait a minute did I hear annihilator no 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 oh I see I made a mistake look the uh, the PP subgroup defined by phi is the annihilator of d phi. So here I'm looking at d phi already, so it will be the annihilator of phi. Okay, so I made a mistake there. This, this has to be phi because it has to be the, the dual of this. d squared is 1, right? So the dual of the dual is the original formula. So I know that this is in p of rr. That means r bar annihilates this whole thing. But now, so, this is like this, right? But now think of it as a new formula. But this is the same as r bar times phi, evaluated at r. Mm -hmm. So this being zero means, hence, the formula inside, which is just r bar phi, is low. But r m bar, r bar m bar, is in this, is inside of m, which is the of the flat radical torsion part of m, right? So that, therefore, uh, if I have something in the injective torsion radical, which is what they called it, injective torsion, then it's in the flat, flat vanishing radical. Converse. Okay. Conversely. It, let's do this. Okay. Okay. So how do we do that? We take something let, um, let's say, let's call it M again, in psi of M with psi low, we want to show that it's in the, in the, inje in the injective torsion radical, right? So, um, what we're going to do is this, and I promise it's five more lines and then we're done. So, um, okay, this is low, therefore the psi of the ring is zero, okay, and therefore, therefore one, this is now silly stuff, and this is zero, mm -hmm. and therefore one is in the annihilator in R, but of course also in the bigger module, E, of psi of RR, but this is D, Psi of E. E now being my specific injective envelope of the ring on the right. That means by Herzog's criterion that one tensor, so you see one is in the D side. So if I take anything from the psi on the other side, it's going to be zero. This is the easy direction of Herzog's criterion. 
And therefore, so what do we want? We want, um, well, therefore, therefore, uh, one um, times psi of m in the in the is in the kernel, mm -hmm. right? In that kernel of epsilon tensor, one sub m, and this is just my psi of m. So this is right. So every low subgroup, every low subgroup of m is contained in, in the radical, mm -hmm. in the injective torsion radical. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I have this. So they're equal. So this is the s sub flat is the definable version of s of the injective torsion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very much. Any questions? So, yeah, um, this is silly, but because uh, you, you made this little reference to domain disease moving mm -hmm. over there, and you know, like computer science brain, oh, I, I, I actually find use for domains. And, uh, but those are different domains. Oh, oh, this is not at all the same. Okay. No, no I mean, this is not don't you call this. domain something mm -hmm. like, like no. not a ring? I mean, something like. Well, the domain of a function. No, 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 no. I mean domain in the, in the sense of Scott order theory. Is that the same domain? Is it? No, no, this is just okay. rings. This is rings without zero divisors. Oh, that's what you mean by domain. Yes. Okay, yes. I'm totally unrelated. Okay. okay. Is, right, that's what Sorry. I'm saying. Yeah, that's you, why you're talking about order theory, so I was... Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. This is ring theory. Okay. Yeah. 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 Representations of rings. But I see. So it's a domain in the sense of ring theory, not in the sense of order theory. Right. Never yeah. mind. That's it. Done. That. Okay. That, helps. that was an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Okay, thank you.